What are you doing? Can't get enough of those leaves, huh? You better leave that spot alone. Get on with the day. Come on. Or, or not. I'll see you later. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here to the bustling parking lot at the Kokomo Convention and Conference Event Center. But there is an auto museum inside those doors and I figured, why not, why not, right? Sound good. It's my second channel, Daily Vlog Channel. It's the Daily Woo. The entryway is down this long hallway. There's no one here but us. There it is, the original Kokomo Bull shirt. I might have to might have to get one of those. My name is Elwood Hayes, and do I have a story for you? I was born on October 14th. This is a gentleman by the name of Elwood Haynes who created the first automobile. And this is a recreation of what it looked like. And there's a picture of it. And the original is in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. ...to withstand the engine vibration. By July 1894, the 820-pound vehicle was ready to road test. On July 4th, a crowd gathered to watch as the machine was pushed into the street. For safety's sake, the automobile was towed out of town by horses to pump and bind pipes for its test run. It's pretty cool that it all started right here, way down in Kokomo, Indiana. And they have designated this stretch of the museum Haynes Avenue. It's like a walk through time. This is a 1921 Haynes model. And if you look closely in the back seat, there's a passenger waiting for a ride. Backseat driver, 101. I really like these early 1900 models. This is 1900, this is 1908. There's just something about like the construction and architecture of vehicles back then. It's kind of neat. And this classic vehicle, according to the side of it, was made in the 1930s, right? Isn't that, am I reading that correctly? I think so, yeah. Can you imagine paying 12 cents a gallon for gas? You get a lot of miles just for a very cheap price. There's a mural on the side of the wall all about Kokomo and all the fun facts and historical significance of the town. They've recreated the Haynes Auto Factory circa 1902 and you can basically walk through it and see what it was like to create those very first automobiles. I'm stationed here to turn this wheel to achieve my spot in automotive history. I just now realized this is a woman with a beard. It's a female with a huge gargantuan stash. Is that what they're called, mutton chops? I think mutton chops are more like, like sideburny, like <laughs> Jacob the car carpetbagger style. But I think, yeah, I guess, yeah. Interesting. You hard at work, buddy? You're getting it done. This guy really seems to enjoy what he has been designated to do. Look at that smile on his face. Just working with a smile. It's gotta be very difficult to concentrate with your glasses not on straight though. Whatever works for you though. This is the chassis from a 1919 model. And this woman here is very, very fascinated. Look, honey, it even comes with a spare tire. A spare tire, James. A spare tire. Spare. Look at it. This is sort of the evolution of the car radio. That one's starting with 1958. There's some here from the 70s. 1977, 1980, cassette tapes, 1994. CD players became very popular. And this one's from 1941, push button, AM only, not even FM yet. It might not look it, but this woman was the queen of the road, Margaret Hogginson. Out of my way, coming through. Coming up now on a classic 
gas station, you'd pull in full service. This guy in the window over here, he's like, I do not want to fill your car up today. I just want to hang out here and listen to these newfangled radios. Just get us there. How much farther do we have to go? The stinking traffic. We're not moving. I gotta be honest, there are way more vehicles in here than I thought there would be. It's pretty freaking cool. And this is not a trunk. This is actually another seat that pops up. So if you had an extra passenger, you could sit back there in the back. In 1929, Ford created this. It's called a wood station wagon. The reason it's called that is because the doors are in fact made out of wood. Would you ride in that? Sure. Would you? In 1915, there was a company called the Fisk Rubber Company, and they had a basically a mascot of this child, and they have recreated it in full-size gargantuan form, holding a candle and carrying a tire. There has to be probably about a hundred cars in this entire building. They even have an old Coca-Cola machine. And check this out. It looks like a Coca-Cola cooler, but it's really a couch. You can just relax and enjoy the ambiance of old school Coca-Cola flavor. What do you do? I'm enjoying the ambiance of that old school Coca-Cola flavor. This was Kokomo's first motorized fire engine. And there he is, the fire chief. Says so right there on his hat. It's pretty fascinating to think that this was really used. This was the very first fire engine that was not horse drawn in town. This is Cassie. She has been recreated in mannequin form standing in front of this Ford, but she was a real person that worked in town for years and years. And that's her right there. This was her father's shop that she grew up in and eventually she took over running the place. And that's her right there. Changing the tire. Whoa, check it out. It's not a hidden Mickey. It's a hidden Roger. Please, Eddie. I wonder why he's hiding there inside that car. I have, what, there's a gangster right there. Tim Tracker. There's even a 1950s diner in here. The Pioneer. I am getting hungry. The doors appear to be closed though. And I think the last customer is being served. I think he might be a little bit creeping the woman out though because she has given some weird body language sir please take your eyes off the waitress sir you're making her very uncomfortable traded the van straight up for it i get 80 miles to the gallon on this hog out of everything you are witnessing one of these cars is not like the others when you see it you will know Shunk -a -gunk -a -gunk -gunk. Tiny car alert. The Buick Torpedo. I would probably get a leg cramp sitting in that. This girl on the bike has just purchased some popcorn and is being served by no one. It's the ghost in the popcorn cart. In all seriousness though, this really was a popcorn cart used for years and years all around Kokomo. In fact, the license plate on the bicycle says the town's name. And who doesn't love these old gremlins? And there's a little teeny one back there. It's like a mini gremlin. I didn't even notice, but we have Alf in there. Hey, Willie! This place is huge. It's basically one massive warehouse building with a lot of vehicles and a lot of history, especially when it comes to this neck of the woods of Indiana. If you're ever in this area, definitely come check it out. It's $5 to get in and well worth it if you're into this sort of thing. Just don't prick your finger on that. You know what happens. We started a little moderate bonfire, except it's not really a bonfire. It's just smoldering leaves. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get a little spark here. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. We have success.
and look at the woods filled with smoke billowing it's kind of creepy it's almost like an area Jason Voorhees would thrive in Although Jason Voorhees never started a fire, as far as I know. I don't know, he might have on accident, but I don't think he purposefully started a campfire. He just put them out in his own way. What the heck? 